Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Dangerous Waters Tutorials. Oh my god, I'm trying to get my freaking timer on my phone and keep clicking the weather instead. How's everyone doing today? Today we're going to be going over fire control. And uh, this isn't really a hard... It's not too terribly hard of a, of a, of a control system to get down. I'm mainly going to go over this interface. I'm actually going to go over weapons, too. Go over the uh, Los Angeles' weapons. I'll have a... Videos on this for the uh, the Kilo and the Akula too, mainly just to go over their weapons. Uh, the fire control principle is the same, but uh, I think a brief overview of the weapons is good because you know there's I mean they, they tell you stats about them, but you can't always get you know can't always get what the torpedo tends to do, you know its tendencies and how to work with it just by reading like a description or whatever. So let's head on over to the fire control. So it gives you the same nav map thing as you know the F5 screen here. So you can you can zoom out, zoom in. All kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, weapons tracks. I don't. <laughs> I don't know what. What is this weapons? I think it like uh, turns on like all. I don't know. I've never really used this button before. That's a good question. Well, maybe we'll launch a weapon at some point and see what this does because I really don't know. And center on own ship. That's a pretty obvious one right there. Uh, so here we have all of our tubes. Now these are not all torpedo tubes. This is a 688i. It has vertical launch tubes, a la. A ballistic missile submarine, except we launch cruise missiles instead. So we got 12 vertical launch tubes and then four torpedo tubes. Uh, if I zoom in here, the the vertical launch tubes are like right around here. You can kind of see them. I could like open one up just to show you here. Um, and then the torpedo tubes are right here. They launch out of the side, so they do launch out at like an angle. So that's something to to keep to worth note. That's something worth noting because on the uh, the, the Russian submarines, um, they have a different type of sonar, so on those submarines, the torpedo tubes come straight out the front. Um, just something you might want to know. If you're, if you're like, really in close to a ship, you might want to be, you know, making it so your sub is facing this way relative to the ship, so the torpedo comes, like, straight out towards it. But that's really close in kind of thing here. So let's open up this vertical launch tube here. This happens to have a TASM, which is a Tomahawk anti-shipping missile. And, uh, or I guess you could say anti-service missile. And uh, there it is right there. Um, I think we're too deep right now to launch these missiles. You have to be above a certain depth, otherwise they won't make it to the surface, and they'll like come back down and explode and mess your mess your ship up. <laughs> At least they do that in sub command. I'm not too sure if they do that now in dangerous waters. Um, I have this set up for a mission where I'm supposed to be fighting. Well, I have it set up for Nordic Hammer, so I'm assuming I'm going to be launching lots of uh, anti-ship missiles. So I only have two TLAMs, TLAM. It's kind of hard to say, but I call them TLAMs. Uh, Tomahawk land attack missile. So use those to like attack bases and stuff. And over here we got Mark 48s and the torpedo tubes. This is the standard torpedo for uh, American ships. It's a very good torpedo. And then down here we have countermeasures, active and passive. Active countermeasures they launch out. They create a lot of bubbles. And the uh, since there's a change in density, the sound has to it reflects back off the bubbles, so it makes this huge blip on like a torpedo's screen. So. This is to full active torpedoes, and then passive torpedoes make a crap ton of noise. Um, we don't run into people launching passive torpedoes on you too much, but I've definitely died from passive torpedoes before. Like, if you're not paying attention, they'll just come up and get you because you're not hearing any pings, so... Uh, I want to do, do, do be weary of that. If someone launches a torpedo, your first action should be, where is it, and where is it going? <laughs> you want to get that down very quickly. All right, so uh, here's all the weapons here. I'll I'll, I'll give a, a brief rundown of all these. Um, the Mark 48. Uh, you're gonna probably want to carry the most of these, but I've never gotten near like using all these before. Tasms, anti-shipping missile, TLAM, land attack missile. Harpoon is also another anti-shipping missile, but it has like half the warhead of the Tasm, so I don't even I don't really even know why the Navy still uses it. I don't know. It's probably lighter and smaller in real life, but that's not something we really have to worry about. UUV. This is an underwater unmanned vehicle, maybe unmanned underwater vehicle, whatever order that's supposed to be. Uh, you launch that bad boy out, and um, you can get he'll he'll swim away. You can get him to you know go out to this distance. And what he does is he actually picks up stuff using a sonar, or it I should say it. I'm being sexist. Um, so it picks up. You know, if I put one, if I put a UV and send it to swim out to here, it would pick up this Kira over here. And then using my sonar and its sonar data, we can it, it'll give you a triangulation. So you can use that to figure out the range on a on a on an enemy ship pretty quickly. But you do have to be going below about four knots, I believe, to launch it. Uh, otherwise, it won't work. It'll just fail. 
and they go pretty slow too. Um, no, I, you're not supposed to see that. It's a sonar screen. <laughs> SLMM. This is a submarine launched mobile mine. I don't think any missions in this game deal with mining. In Sub Command, there was a mission as in a cooler where you had to mine a port in Britain or whatever, but that's that. And the active and passive countermeasures, I went over those. FIM 92 SAM, this is the missile that gets launched out of the sail bridge at helicopters and P3s and stuff, or bears or something. So that's a brief overview of the weapons. There are a lot more weapons for the Russian ships, but we'll get into that when we get into that. Uh, so, yeah, okay, so back here. Um, there's different ways you can assign targeting packages for your weapons. So let's go ahead. There's a well. This dash thing. Um, I guess I should explain that last snapshot. This is just a, you know, a blind shot. You tell it a bearing to go, and you tell it when to turn on, and that's it. That's all you tell it. Um, secret pattern wide narrow. Uh, a wide pattern. You know, it'll be looking for ships. You know, maybe in this kind of a range, and then a narrow pattern for this kind of a range. You know, basically a wide pattern is if you're just shooting at one ship. Um, all you want to find is this one ship, so you want to make sure it actually picks it up, you know, if it's really far away, you're not too sure on its actual position, you probably want a wide seeker. But if you got like a really tight cluster of convoy and you're trying to go for a specific ship, you want the narrow seeker pattern, assuming you know like exactly where the ship is. Uh, destruct range, this is the maximum distance the missile will go before it just automatically self-destructs. Uh, so if you're trying to go for a specific ship but the missile doesn't find it, um, use this to turn it off so it doesn't lock onto some other ship that you're not trying to engage on, like maybe a merchant man or something. And then secret range says is when the missile goes active. So that's that for a snapshot. Now we can do zero. We can, uh, if you do this dash, dash, dash thing, it takes off the snapshot preset. So we can uh, assign Sierra 1, which is this Kirov, to vertical tube 7. And it, it automatically chooses what bearing you should do based on the course and speed and stuff. So all you have to do is a secret range and destruct range with that. Um, for for land attack missiles, you don't have snapshot or anything like that. You just you just define the presets. All you have to do for this, say there's a base right here that we want to attack. I actually think that's Gremiha right there. So if we want to attack Gremiha, you know, you just uh, you can do this and define target waypoints. Um, and you can like uh, make it do all kinds of crazy stuff, have a crazy flight profile, and then once again destruct range. These missiles can go really far, um, very far. They have a really long range. I think they could go like. 600 nautical miles it looks like 700 800 900 how far can this guy go 1300 nautical miles it looks like it has a pretty long range <laughs> and then uh yeah you can adjust the, the waypoint waypoints manually like this but it's probably just better to do define waypoints this way you know and then you can uh nope oh, if you go back to here you can uh, click on the waypoint and then automatically adjust these things but uh it'll it'll really adjust it a lot it'll adjust it a lot it's not uh, just minutes of latitude here, not really the finest measurement. Is that even changing anything? I don't even know. Doesn't look like it. Okay, back to fire control. Yeah, so that's that's tomahawks and uh, both forms of tomahawks here. Harpoons the same setup, and then uh, you can do Mark 48s too. You don't have to des you don't have to designate a target to this if you don't want to. Um, just designating a target takes care of a lot of the tricky work. It uh. It's able to choose like the right bearing you want to launch it on, you know, like an interceptory kind of track. So you got run to enable. Um, divide this by 2,000 to get nautical miles. So right now it's set to enable at five nautical miles. Uh, depth. This is something you want to be careful of because in some maps, say we were out here at this 300 feet depth, and then we, our target's over here at 134 feet. If this torpedo was to run at 200 feet the whole time, it would run aground. So you want to make sure that the torpedo is shallow enough. Speed, this is the max speed. You can make it run slower if you want. It's a lot harder to pick up. It's going to take a lot longer to get there, but, um, you know, sometimes you might want to launch a slow torpedo try not to give away your position too much. Or uh, people won't, and it, maybe if you don't want people to track the torpedo too. And then if, uh, I'll get down to that. Ceiling, uh, this is how shallow you want the torp to run. Uh, whatever, it's fine. Uh, maybe if it's a really rough sea, you might want it to go kind of deep to get out of the waves. So it doesn't try and, because the waves could probably give it some kind of crazy sonar performance or something. Floor, this is the maximum depth the torpedo is allowed to run to. Um, I always just try and make it um, as shallow as the shallowest water in the area I'm playing. So I'd probably make it 130 feet here, and then I'd probably make this torpedo actually run at like 60 feet if I was launching at a target right here. Acoustics, you have active and passive. Active is when you know ping, ping. It sends out a ping and looks for a return to home on target passive. It's just trying to get sound. 
So if you want passive, you're going to want it to go less than the top speed because uh, flow noise will mess with it, mess with the passive torpedo if, it, if it's uh, going too fast. Search pattern snake. So if we were to launch the torpedo out to this keer off, assuming it, it enables right here, it's going to snake along right, like this looking for a, looking for a target. Um, it's weaving back and forth, but it's still moving forward. A circular search pattern. Um, it'll get out to the to the point of enable, and it'll just like keep spinning around looking for a target. Circular search pattern is much more common for an airdrop torpedo, and then snake pattern is much more common for a submarine launch torpedo. I don't think I've ever used a circular search torpedo for a Mark 48. You might be able to use a circular search torpedo to, you know, people are going to come out of this bay. You could just uh, put some torpedoes on circular search right here, enable them, and just have them like <laughs> just spin around out here and keep people from leaving out because the torpedoes are just out there. I've never done anything like that, but you know that's something you could do. Uh, let's see, what does the W do? I'm trying to remember here. I don't think the W is anything that matters for a, a torpedo. I think that's. I think this is a. If you have a tomahawk in these tubes, you can click W and quickly assign waypoints. Um, I think that's what that does. I don't really particularly remember. Um, I'll load up a TASM here in that tube, and we can see what's going on. I'll speed up time here just to uh, get that guy out there. Yeah, we can close this tube. So this is the launch panel here. So to launch a TASM, you know, you got to pressurize the tube, open the muzzle door, and then for torpedo, they just have one more step, flood equalize muzzle door. Um, there's nothing really too tricky about it. And then you, you can't fire it until you actually assign a target to it. So even though you can, like, adjust the presets, you still got to assign a target to it to be able to fire. So right now, it won't let us fire tube 2, so we can just assign CR2 to it, and then you can fire it now. But we're not going to do that. So I have, I have realistic reload times on right now, so it's taking a... Oh, I didn't even want a TASM. I wanted a TLAM. All right, well, you can try it out for yourself. I'm pretty sure if you if you click W here, it's just a quick way to assign waypoints. And, uh, yeah, I think that's about it here. Oh, another thing. When you launch a tor or torpedo... Here, I'll just launch one. Let's actually launch this one to this guy. <laughs> All right, so after you launch the torpedo here... Um, you have these options here, you know, enable, pre-enable, shutdown, and you can actually change the heading that you want the torpedo to run. So enable just, you know, turns it on. Pre-enable puts it back to its current state like this, where it's just running. And when it when it enables, these will become red. And when it's pre-enabled, they're white. And then shutdown, you know, you just shut down the torp. So that's all there is to that. I don't want to spook this guy. He's technically my ally, even though I have him classified as a bad guy. <laughs> I wonder if he juiced it up just then. No, I'm not going to look at the sonar. All right, so... And then uh, I mentioned this before the high pressure air. You gotta watch out with this for the torpedo. You start. You always start at 80% high pressure air, but each time you launch a weapon, it goes down by 2%. Um, percentages are. This number goes down by two. I I I I have a pet peeve about percentages. I'll get into that later. Maybe who knows. So if you get down to 50% high pressure air, you can't launch any more weapons. So you have to charge this. Um, I think the reason for that is because uh, you want to make sure you have enough reserves for an emergency blow. And if you keep going past 50%, you might not have enough high pressure air to get like all the water out of the ballast tanks at like you know a crazy depth or something. So I think that's the reason for that. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I think that's all I wanted to cover for fire control here. Uh, I was thinking about getting into uh, the Akula and Kilo weapons in this video, but. I, I think I'm going to go through, I'm going to do separate series for those ships, separate thing just to show the differences between Akula and Kilo, so I think I'll save it for then. I don't want to get too crazy with the weapons here. Um, yeah, American subs, a lot simpler on the weapons, you basically have four weapons that can do everything. Um, Russian subs have a lot more weapons that can do a lot more stuff. Maybe more or less just because the Americans have such a sound advantage in this game that they wanted to give the, uh, the Russians a little bit of an advantage here, but yeah, that's about it. Yeah, so thanks for watching, everyone. That was the fire control tutorial. Tune in next time, and we will be taking on Sonar. Um, I think I'm going to make this a thing. You know, I usually don't upload on Sunday, but I think I'm going to make a tutorial Sunday now. I'm just upload, you know, probably two tutorials per Sunday. And I, I think that sounds good to me. I normally don't upload on Sunday just because when you're doing two LPs, six videos a week, if I was to do all seven, like, the days would always alternate and it would just, like, mess with my brain. So I mainly just do it for me out of, uh, over anything else. So, yeah, Sundays are now Tutorial Sundays. So look forward to Tutorial Sundays. So this next Sunday we'll have two videos coming up for Sonar or however many videos I need. Sonar won't be as bad, but then TMA Tutorial will be bad. <laughs> bad for me. It should be good for you. 
Alright, yeah, thanks for watching. See you guys later, and make sure to tune in for the rest of my tutorials.